Hello my friends! Welcome to the second Q&A session. I really need to find a catchy name for this. If you have a suggestion, write it down in the comments. Today I will answer another batch of your questions that you guys asked under my community tab post. Also I wanted to say thank you for all of your questions. Unfortunately it's impossible to me to answer every of them. But as a little tip, the earlier you ask your question, the higher is the chance that other people will find it and upvote it. Last note, and maybe you've realized it, I'm trying to do a one take without a script this time. Usually when I make a guide, I always have a script, so I'm not forgetting anything. Today I will try it without it, so bear with me. Now let's start with the first question and it's come from Fishbucket. What a name. What win rate is considered above average when you are playing solo queue? As I explained in my previous Q&A video, in solo queue you will win around 20% and loser won 20% of your matches, no matter what you do. Therefore, the highest win rate you can have is around 80%. When you take this into perspective, a win rate of 55% is definitely above average. Everything higher than 65% means that you will rank up pretty fast to the next rank. But, and here comes a big but, the only win rate that really matters is the ranking win rate in the current season. Everyone started as a completely newborns and therefore was stuck at a certain point. In my first ever season for example, I was stuck in epic rank until one or two days before the season ended and the next season I was stuck in legend before I reached mythic for the first time. That's why my win rate on my main account is only 56% on all seasons. On my smurf account on the other hand that I used like two seasons ago, I have a win rate of 77% and when you compare the win rates of my heroes, you have a totally different picture from the players, although it's both me. I think in ranking there should be an option where you can show the win rate of a hero from the current season. Also I think the win rate is not everything. It also depends on which rank you are. Someone with a 60% win rate in mythic is still way better than someone with a 60% win rate in epic for example. So long story short, if your win rate is above 55% you are above average, at least in your rank. And the second question is, what are some of the heroes that can solo carry from early to late game without being buff or tank dependent. Again, like I explained in my last Q&A video, you can't solo carry a team with 4 noobs, unless the enemies are completely noobs as well. And then, it doesn't really matter which hero you use, as long as you're really good with the hero you play. If you're good with the current meta hero though, your chances of winning the even matches is higher. Again, check out the heroes ranking to get a good overview of which hero are mostly used and banned and wait for the video next week where I will show you guys the in my opinion best heroes to rank up in the next season. The next question is from Coco Gold, another great name. Can you give a guide on how to adjust your build according to the situation depending on the enemies? Yes, this is planned when I'm done with the item guide series. After I explained all items, I will make a video where I'm showing you how you can create your own build and use it to your advantage. And part of it is also how to adjust your build. For that, you can already check out the item guide playlist so you learn how each item in the game works. Until now, I've covered 42 of the existing 53 items and the remaining 11 items will be explained in the next few weeks. Next is Hello! Hello MLG. Does the hero win rate determine how good the player is or the numbers of matches does? It's pretty much both, isn't it? When you have a high win rate with a hero, I would suggest that you're good with it but if someone have 1000 games with a hero but only a 55% win rate, I would also consider him pretty good because of the many matches that player has with that hero. The next question is from JD8XU. What is the value of a turtle, a single kill and a turret? So I can rotate easily while not being so dumb. Well first, I don't think you're dumb. About rotation, you can watch my rotation guide that covers the basic of what you need to know about it for every role. To answer your question about the value, the outer turret gives you 110, the middle one 130 and the inner one 150 gold. The turtle gives you 100 gold and the single kill 200 gold. The gold for the killed is depending on what hero you killed though. If you kill an enemy that is feeding, the value can go down to 50 gold per kill. If you shut down a hero on the other hand, it can get up really high. You're seeing now a shutdown example. I don't know if anyone ever made a video about the exact value of each minion, creep etc. Would be maybe an interesting idea. Next we have my discord server mod Corbear. By the way, join my server 
if you want to chat with other Mobile Legends players and take part in the upcoming events. Here's my question this time. What's your number one favorite hero and skin? And why are they your favorite? <clears throat> right off the bat I would say my favorite hero at the moment is 1-1. Because I love how quick she is and activating her ult is always a feel good moment. And skin wise I would say... Hmm... Probably Jord's collector skin. It just looks awesome to me and it really cost me a fortune. But it was totally worth it. Also, can we get an MLG Uvu with Nico Nico Ni? To give some context to everyone who isn't part of my Discord server, since my name is Nico, the Nico Nico Ni gif came up quickly. And there was even a petition for it that I'm saying it in one video. So, here we go. Nico Nico Ni! Wait, I can do better. <coughs> Nico Nico Ni! Hold up, I can even do higher. I hope you're happy now. And I didn't confuse the hell out of the non-discord viewers. The next question is from Becky... Becky Tero. Becky Tero? I think I completely dodged that. <coughs> do you play any other games in ML? And will you do live streams in the future? Well, right now I hardly have any time to play other games in ML. The only other game I'm playing right now is Go Vacation with my daughter. But before I started my YouTube channel, I've played many other games. Persona 5 for example, where I completed both the normal and royal version. I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, I also played Fire Emblem 3 Houses that I finished twice with two different houses. And I was playing... what else were I playing? Ah, I was playing Football Manager and Pro Evo every once in a while. And... Ah, Heroes of Might and Magic 3. This I usually play for a couple of weeks during the Christmas holiday season. Or when I got bored with every other game. Big recommendation if you need a break from the action of ML. Regarding live streams, I must say that at least right now it's not planned. If I want to do live streams, I want to make it regularly. And right now, with everything that I'm planning, it's just not possible to fit it into my schedule. Talking about plans, the next question is from Shybean. Should I have to be a pro to become a YouTuber? I am a Mythic player and had my best season with 60% win rate. And I have over 65% win rate on my mains. As I already said, I was thinking to make another channel where I'm talking about everything regarding YouTube. This is what I'm currently working on behind the scenes by the way. To give you a few tips right now, I don't think you need to be a pro to become a YouTuber for ML. I'm not a pro myself, but I wanted to help people who want to improve in Mobile Legends. Also I wanted to learn how to do video editing, voiceovers etc. That's why I started my YouTube channel. If you're thinking about becoming a YouTuber, just do it. Make your first few videos and find out if you're having fun making them. This is by the way the only thing you should care about in the beginning. I can almost guarantee you that you will have almost no views on your first videos and that's totally okay. I hope I haven't discouraged now anyone. Just check the views on my first 4 videos after 7 days. In the beginning it's more important that you learn how to make videos and that you have fun while doing it. Once you've realized that you have fun, you can think about everything else that is part of being a YouTuber. And I'm not only talking about thumbnails and titles. You can think about a strategy on how to present your videos and how to grow on YouTube. In your case, I would for example suggest that you could make a video series based on you becoming a pro in Mobile Legends. You can for example take part of the hero journey concept. If you're unfamiliar with the term, it is a writing formula and is a 12 stage narrative arc that describes the journey of a hero. Go and check out this video on the top right corner if you want to know more. The hero in this case will be you. And the journey could be you becoming a pro in Mobile Legends. Or reaching mythical glory for example. What would make that story interesting is that people can follow you on your way, most likely being in the same position as you are, that they want to rank up further, so they can relate to you. Or they are just interested in seeing someone giving everything to reach that one goal. Stories and videos are a very effective way to keep a view on your video and make them willing to subscribe and watch more of your videos because they want to know how the story ends. This is just an example of what you could do in the situation you are in. There are dozens of things you can do even when you are not a pro in Mobile Legends. A good example of stories would be Petoski's videos for example. In most of his videos he's telling a little story. Next time you watch his video, notice how in the beginning of every video he always drags you into a story, explaining the villains of the story, which are certain enemy heroes for example, the use of slow, and epic music, depending on what is happening in the game, 
the obstacles he has to overcome, etc. All of this is part of a story he's telling to the viewers. While he's doing it, he's of course also giving some tips about the hero he's playing or about map awareness for example. Which is a great combo, entertaining the viewer and teach them some things. I for example teach more than entertain, but you may have noticed in my editing that I'm always trying to have a few jokes in between the lines, so you're not feeling like you're in school. Well, I think I talked enough about it now. You may realize now why I want to make a second channel where I'm talking about YouTube. I have so many things to talk about YouTube and get easily excited while doing so. Next we have Dracorex. How do you react when someone picks a hero that you are going to play in this round? Well, I personally have no problem with that, unless someone picks it to troll me, but that only happened like once to me, because I'm not giving anyone the reason to troll me. Again, when you play in solo queue and you can play two or more heroes in each role, it doesn't really matter if someone picked the hero you want, because you can simply adjust. With over 100 heroes in the game, there should be at least 10 that you can find fun to play. The next question is from Vixos Does the Queen's Rings Queen's Wings, I cannot say Queen's Wings. Does the Queen's Rings damage reduction applies for all kind of damage, even for true damage, or only the physical damage? Neither. It reduces magic and physical damage, but not true damage. True damage can't be reduced by any armor. Next we have Wondry's question. What do you think is the best role to play when ranking up? Uh, they're all pretty equal to me right now. Except the Roma role in lower ranks. As tank, you can really have a hard time. When you plan an ambush and your teammates are just running around the map like headless chickens, showing themselves on it constantly and getting ambushed every 30 seconds. But in higher ranks, it's maybe the most important and maybe even the most fun role to play. Making a successful engage with a nice follow up that completely destroys the whole enemy team is probably the most satisfying thing you can have in the game. Uh, as side laner you're also a little bit dependent on the team, because when the enemy team is constantly ganking your lane and your team is not rotating to it, you will have a really difficult time defending it and also become easily underfarmed. So when you play the jungle, mid or rumor role, please make sure to rotate properly. Next we have Raikza. Can you make a list of heroes that are suitable for beginners? Uh, I would say most heroes are suitable for beginners. You shouldn't maybe start with Fanny, Gushin or Kagura for example. And maybe you might laugh at me right now, but I also think that immobile MMs like Leah Leela? Leah? Who is Leah? But I also think that immobile MMs like Leila or Mia are not the easiest to play. From the pure mechanics, they are very simple of course, but you need a very good map awareness and the right positioning and ganks, because otherwise you will be faster dead than you can think. But this is something that most newbies don't have, and that's why I wouldn't recommend those kind of heroes to them. Now to the list. Note that this list is by no means complete, so don't freak out if I'm not mentioning your favorite hero. As Roma or Tank, I would pick probably Tigreal, Kufra and Atlas, purely for the insane CC abilities. On the XP lane you can go for Ruby, Uranus, Jawhead, Khaled, Sun and Belmont. You can also pick Xborg if he's not getting banned. On the gold lane you can pick Brody, Clint, Carry, Yisunshin, Changi or Wanwan. Maybe a bit controversial to put Wanwan as easy though. But once you learn how to activate her ult and control her jumps, she's really easy to use. 10 minutes of practice mode and maybe one or two matches against the AI and you're good to go. Uh, by the way, it would be also maybe a good idea to talk about how to learn a new hero. First I would go on YouTube and search for a guide of the hero you want to learn, so you know the basics. Then you go to practice mode and learn the combos of the hero, until you can execute them like 10 times in a row without any mistake. Then go to custom mode and go into a 2v5 or 3v5 against the AI or 3v5 against the AI. Or if you're good, you can also go for a 1v5. There you can further train the combos, including the cooldowns, etc. Afterwards, it's time to play classic. At this point, you should be good and comfortable enough with that hero that you should perform quite well in the match. And if not, it's classic, so it's fine. Back to the list now. Mid you can pick Nana, Cyclops, Eudora, Changi, Vale or Matilda. And as a jungler, Harley or Saber, if none of them is getting banned. All other assassins can be quite hard to play for beginners. Except Halkert maybe, but he's quite weak at the moment. Otherwise you can also pick many fighters as jungler, such as Belmont, Jawhead, Sun and Xbox. 
Um, right now you could also use many MMs as jungler, but in the next patch they are supposed to deal less damage to jungle creeps, what will lead to many of them are not a viable option for jungler anymore. So right now I cannot really recommend one of them for the jungle. For this we have to wait and see the changes in the new patch on the 21st of September. Now to the last question, and this is from Cranker. Would you rather pancake or waffle? This is really important. Well, I love to eat both. Or am I missing a joke here? I'm really not sure. If I'm missing a joke, please let me know in the comments. Anyway, that's all for today's Q&A. I hope you enjoyed it. And make sure to check out the item guides playlist I was talking about. So you're ready for the video where I talk about how to create your own build. See you over there.